Sometimes I even embarrass myself with this meme I made. I merely can't even instead of merely can. <laughs> so dumb. So uh, Millikan and Fletcher, actually, in 1909, they did an experiment uh, where they're looking at the effects of oil drops in an electric field. Now, these oil drops were actually positively charged. And so what they did is this. They put these oil drops right here. They put them in between two charged plates, just like we've been looking at before. There's going to be a potential difference between them. So we've got this V here. And now they used oil drops instead of water. Now, why? Because if they used water, well, water might evaporate, and then the mass isn't conserved. It's not constant. They were trying to keep everything constant they could. So oil drops worked better because they didn't evaporate. Okay. So what happens then is this. Uh, let's look at maybe like what does the oil drop feel? Well, let's actually focus on one of these oil drops. Let's just say I take one of them right here. Remember, it's got a positive charge here, this little thing. Okay, so what's going on in this thing? Well, because it's sitting, uh, you know, on Earth, it feels a downwards force of gravity. So F, G, it's going to feel that. But it's also, because of the way it's lined up right here, uh, remember about the field lines, electric field, uh, let's see, um, it's the direction that a positive test charge would go. Because this is a plus here, it wants to go away from the plus, it wants to go up. And the direction of the electric field is also the direction of the electric force. So it's going to feel a force going upwards as well. So in this case right here, then it'll feel an upwards force, some Coulomb force going up. Okay, and we don't know how big these ones are. Right? Maybe Fe is bigger, then you know these oil drops are actually going to go kind of up. Or if you make it too small, like if you change the uh, potential difference here, you make it too small, oops, then the oil drops will drop down. But what if they adjust the plates just right? So that way, it's not accelerating. See, they're at constant speed. So that means then that that downwards uh, FG is going to be exactly equal to the upwards FE. Okay, that's because if they have no net force, then you know the upwards force has to equal the downwards force. That means you can say then that FE is going to equal FG. This is going to be the key thing because now we can actually uh, go ahead and calculate what's going on here. Now we have this equation right here for F, uh, FG is actually pretty easy. That one right there is just uh, M times G, you know, mass times acceleration. What about FE? Well, we have an equation that goes, uh, actually, maybe I'll remind you. It goes uh, like this. Remember, it's, um, I'll write it here. It's E equals F over Q. Therefore, F must be just EQ. So if it makes sense then, that's why I put now EQ. And that means if I want to solve for Q then, I'll get Q by itself. That means the charge then is just going to be, well, let's see, it's going to be mg, and I'm going to divide by E. So it'll just be mg over E, the electric field strength. Now that's maybe useful, but I'd like to get it in terms of V, in terms of the potential difference that we had. So I'm going to write this down. So I'll say, but remember, we have another equation for E. Uh, I don't know if you remember that, but we have another one. It goes E equals V over D. And because of that then, well, we'll put in, then instead of that, then we'll put in a V over D here. So that means we end up with, so maybe I'll just put this one here. So we end up then with, let's see, Q, which is MG over E. Well, it's going to be MG over, and instead of V, I put in V over D now. So V over D. What happens when we divide by a fraction? Do you remember? You multiply by the reciprocal. So that means we're going to get, therefore, we're going to get mg, and the d then will end up flipping and coming on top, so it'll be mgd, all that will be over v. And this is going to be our final equation right here then. This is the one right here we're going to need. So this, with this equation right here, you can actually figure out then the charge based on the distance, based on the mass of these drops, and based on the potential difference. So this is, I think, the, the really key one here. Um, and it turns out, what do they find? They found that this value of Q, this charge that they actually calculated, was always some multiple of some weird number. It was just 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs all the time. Like, oh, that's weird. It's always quantized. It's always coming in specific countable amounts. Maybe it's one of those, or two of those, or three of those. But it's always a multiple of this number. And that is when uh, we get, give these guys credit for figuring out, hey, this is evidence for the fact that charge is quantized. What do we mean by that? We mean that charge always comes in multiples of this 
1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And now we actually call that E. Now that's called the charge of an electron. So this one right here, this little value right here, actually we call this E. And if you look it up in your data book, that's what it says. Right? E is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And we think that's because, well, everything is made of electrons. So you either have one electron, or you have two, or you have three, or you have four, or whatever. So that's why we think uh, this is actually a really pretty neat experiment that they did, and they ended up finding out that charge is quantized. Okay, so let's do a little bit of advice then, like what could you see on exams? Well, we could add, I mean, not just what we just saw here, not just like the straight old Millikan experiment, but they could actually include like a buoyancy force and also like a viscous drag force. So if something is like in some kind of fluid, you know, and then if there is a buoyancy, and if it's moving up, then there's a drag force down and so on. You can have all of those together. So let's just say in, in this example, let's say this object here is going to be moving upwards. That's this, this arrow right here that's going upwards with constant speed. Well then, I could do my vectors like I did before. So let's say maybe downwards is going to be Fg, the force of gravity. And we're going to have maybe upwards, we're going to have this, um, I don't know how long to make these, it'll all depend on the situation, but this electric force, let's say going up. Uh, well, you could also have some extra vectors, couldn't you? You can also have, for example, um, well, if there's a buoyancy force, a buoyancy will probably be up, so that'll be Fb, a buoyancy force. And because it's moving upwards, drag force always acts opposite, so maybe there's a drag force. So the trick would be to just line up your equations, and if it's going constant speed, then you know all the up arrows added together have to be equal to and opposite to the down arrows. In other words, the up plus the up has to equal the down plus the down. So that means, in this case, if I want to do the up ones, so maybe I'll even write it like this, I'll say up. Well, that's going to be, uh, let's see, it's going to be FB plus FE. And that's going to be equal to, uh, in this case, the downs, so FG plus FD. That'll be the downs. We could actually figure these out. I mean, we have the buoyancy force equation, right? It's just uh, rho v g. And then we have the electric force. Let's see, that's going to be uh, just E times Q. We have our gravitational force going downwards. That'll be mg. And then we can look up the uh, drag force. What's that one again? It's 6. I think that's it. So for example, you could set these and then, you know, do some magic, do some math, and figure out whatever you need to figure out. But on your actual exam, it's really going to depend on the specific question. But the key thing will be that at constant speed, you know that all your up arrow, like all your forces up, are going to equal all your forces down. That's really going to be the key thing, right? So all your up arrows will equal the down arrows. So you can make it up. It, it all depends on what numbers they've given you or what quantities you're looking at. But at least I thought this would set you up very well for just about anything you could be asked as far as buoyancy, viscous drag force, and now with electric forces as well.